Reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we know that we are passed from life, death to life because we love our brothers. Whoever does not work remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that anyone who is a murderer does not have eternal life remaining in him. The way we came to know love was that he laid down his life for us. So we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If someone who has worldly means sees a brother in need and refuses him compassion, how can the love of God remain in him? Children, let us, not, let us love not in word or in speech, but in deed and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Responsorial song. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear and be glad. I will bless the Lord at all times. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. And I bless the Lord for all my eyes. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you might be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. I will bless the Lord for all my eyes. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps those who will fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. I bless the Lord all times. Fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for naught is, is lacking to those who fear him. The great will grow poor and hungry, but those who seek the Lord want for no good thing. I bless the Lord all times. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I will give you a new commandment to love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia. especially in a culture like ours, which is increasingly <coughs> becoming whiny, and a culture which increasingly grows victimhood. Uh, vi everyone is a victim. Everyone has something to complain about. Yeah, welcome to the human family and welcome to uh, Earth. Uh, ever since Adam and Eve got kicked out, uh, that's been kind of the human condition. And uh, the problem with victimhood, the problem with victimhood, is that it paralyzes you and it excuses you. It's the fuzzy end of the lollipop syndrome, huh? Uh, several generations ago, many of you remember several generations ago. Um, if you were uh, going to get a haircut, if you were a little kid, or you were going to the dentist or the doctor, especially for the first time, and you didn't show signs of being uh, Jeffrey Dahmer or Lizzie Borden, uh, you would get a lollipop. You know, now today they probably have to give you a computer or a cell phone <laughs> and the latest uh, crazy game on the computer, those things, God forbid. 
Um, and sometimes you drop the lollipop after you had taken a few swipes of it. And you may have had one of these hairy sweaters on and it would fall on that. And when you got the lollipop up, it was still a lollipop, however, somehow, it had managed to grow hair. Not that I'm suggesting you without hair start sucking lollipops. It doesn't work that way. Take your Rogaine or whatever people take today. I have no idea. Um, and you looked at it. It was still a lollipop. The sweetness and the taste was still underneath. But on top was the fuzzy part. Now, you had a couple of choices. You could take the lollipop and throw it away and start crying. Today's culture. Or you could attempt to pull them off, which was unsuccessful. Or you could put it under the water or something like that and try to wash it off, which was equally unsuccessful. Or you decided to shove the thing in your mouth because it was still sweet and either you ate those little fuzzy things with it, or when it came to your teeth, you spit them out. And to a large extent, life is like that. See, there's fuzz on everything, and you can throw it away. Boop, boop. But you also miss the goodness that lies underneath the fuzz. And many people today are very happy to do that. Get rid of it. No good. I don't want it. And in our gospel, Jesus, interestingly enough, places the responsibility on what today we would term victims. That's what he does. I mean, if you read this and really think about it for a moment, uh, to the person who strikes you on one cheek off of the other. Are you crazy? I'm immediately signing up for Kung Fu. Or I'm going to look at the uh, Karate Kid movies to find out how to do that. The person who takes your coat takes my coat. He's a thief. Where are the police? We only want them in those kind of situations. Otherwise, we want to get rid of them, of course. We found that out. And do not even withhold your tuning. That's insane. By, by, by all standards, that's nuts. Except by the standards of the kingdom of God. See, that's the problem. You see, because Jesus is saying, how you pass from being a victim to being victorious. And you have to decide which one you want. Some people are in a perpetual state of victimhood. They are the way they are because of some past thing that took place. Some injustice, some offense, some slight. And yes, it happened. The fuzz is really on the lollipop. But then the question is, what do you do with it? Do you throw it away? But you're going to miss all of the goodness that's underneath it. That's what you're going to do. But since we live in such a throwaway society and culture, that's the first thing. Um, if you walk by a jewelry store and you look at all those beautiful diamonds that are in the window, they didn't come out of the ground like that. It took a great deal of cutting, a great deal of polishing, a great time and effort and cra craftsmanship and attention to the cut, to the shape. 
So often what we can do is when we come across situations and people, and somehow they don't sparkle, or they don't come in just the right cut, get rid of them. Get rid of them. What happens is we fail to see the diamond that can be polished and can be shaped. But if we're in a perpetual state of victimhood, it's a wonderful life, in a sense, because you always have an excuse for your behavior. Well, you don't understand what happened to me. No, I really don't, and it's rather boring that after 30 years you're still living it, frankly. And maybe it would help if you got your lip off your shoulder and kind of tried living. But there are many people who love that rather than becoming victorious. Victorious, not victim. And Jesus' description, it seems to be, is that the way in which we pass from being a victim to being victorious is to overcome evil with good. To overcome slight, even wrongdoing. It's wrong, but to overcome it with generosity. To heap coals upon the evil so that it's transformed. Because there are those who walk around with an ethic and say, you fight fire with fire. But what do you have? You have more fire. I'd much prefer to not throw gasoline on the fire, but see if I can find some asbestos. That can at least salvage something, maybe. But that's the approach. And Jesus says, give and gifts will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, flowing into your lap. Because when we get vengeance, the only one who it really hurts is the person who seeks the vengeance because it consumes. It colors one's whole vision of life. So it does. You say, well, God says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Yes. Yes, he does. And you want to know God's vengeance? You're tired of hearing me say it, and I'll say it until... Somebody does it. You look at that up there, that beautiful uh, presentation you had. There's God's vengeance, right up there. God's vengeance is the cross. Suffering, enduring, forgiving love. That's God's vengeance on our sinfulness. And if you want to see the supreme victim, the supreme victim is right there on the cross. Innocent. Ramrodded in a foamy fake trial. Abused. Tortured. Humiliated. Made to carry his own instrument of execution through the streets. Hung between two thieves. Outlawed by the political establishment, rejected by the religious establishment, up there on the cross. There is your supreme victim, right up there on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even after the thief says, well, come on, get yourself down from here. You did great things for all these other people. Do it for us. Do it for yourself. And Jesus coming down off the cross, transcending the evil and the violence and the hatred and the humiliation and the injustice. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We don't pass from victimhood to victorious 
by staying fixed in victimhood. Because we become paralyzed. We become an invalid, spiritually. That's, that's our choice. That's a choice. You know, it's like people walking around with resentment. Resentment is, you know, taking poison and expecting the other person to die. It doesn't work that way. If you take the poison of resentment, the only person that dies is you. That's who dies. Because it eats you, it corrodes you. And you spend so much of your time waiting to pay back. Get back. And, you know, Saturday is always devoted to the Blessed Mother. I'm going to end on this. Uh, blessed Mother, at the Annunciation, St. Luke tells us she was deeply troubled by the message from the angel. It wasn't, let's have a party. Let's get a block thing going. Send out announcements. She was deeply troubled and wondered what, what did it mean? She was pregnant, didn't have a husband in the ritual sense of the term, in a small village, uh, only because of Joseph did she escape stoning because under the law she should have been stoned. But Joseph chose not to do his right, but to do the right thing. And he decided to divorce a choir when the angel came to him and told him, don't do that, it's God's plan, not man's plan. And so, what does Mary do? Mary leaves in haste to go to her kinswoman, Elizabeth. The Annunciation leads to the visitation. Mary doesn't become self-absorbed in all of the negativity, in all of the, the wonderment, the doubt, in all of her pondering without being ponderous. What does she do? She is the woman for us more than she is for herself. Victim to victorious. And I imagine if we went around this church, and I think it's true, and we gave you a piece of paper and a pencil and asked you to jot down how have you been a victim? How have you been hurt and slighted? Maybe many years ago, maybe five minutes ago. Now, what are the ways that you have been bruised and scraped and maybe had a head-on collision? I have no idea. Write those down, we could all do that. And we can hold those papers and we can keep them until we breathe our last. Or we can discard them and trade them for the pages of how to be victorious. Not through our own efforts, but by the way and the example of the Supreme Victor who died upon the cross for us, though innocent so that we might give life. That's, that's the way, the truth and the life. May we trade those papers of victimhood and be liberated from that so that we may walk <coughs> into true victorious freedom of those who follow the way of the cross into the way of resurrection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please stand. <clears throat> Let us pray for all of our religious leaders that they may be men and women outstanding in faith.
and truly care for those entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for our civic and governmental leaders, that they may be men and women outstanding in virtue, and we truly work for the common good, be ever mindful of the poor, and always defend the dignity and sacredness of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all of our relatives and friends who are sick in mind, body, and spirit that the graces of Jesus, the divine physician, may touch them and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Lord and let us pray for all of those who have died, our relatives and our friends. We remember this morning at this Mass, Ed Gardner, and uh, uh, also Robert uh, Saskero, that they indeed may rest in the peace of the crucified and risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we present all of our prayers to you. You search our hearts and you know what we need. Help us always to walk in the victory that you have won, the victory of passing from death to life through your cross and resurrection. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.